Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at a spectrum analysis function in SampleWrench. Now the spectrum analysis doesn't allow you to edit the sound per se, like all of the other functions, but it does allow you to get in there and analyze it and see what's happening in terms of the frequency content at various moments in time. So we're going to start up with a very simple little sound, which is a snippet about half a second worth of a flute. So we'll just give this a little play. And you can hear just that little bit of flute, right? So if you zoom in on this a bit, you can see that we don't have a nice simple sine wave. So this thing must be containing several different frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to functions and grab the FFT spectrum analysis. All right, now there's a series of things we can set here, but I'm just going to start off with the uh, defaults, which is a linear frequency scale, a uh, normal amplitude scale versus a decibel version. And um, the FFT point size over here, this is essentially a trade-off between the resolution and the frequency domain. So if you have a big number over here, you get good frequency resolution. Um, and time resolution. So a small number would give you good time resolution. So we have 512 here, which is right in the middle. So it's a good compromise. Okay, now let's open up our FFT window here so we can see this a little bit better. And what we have going across the bottom is the time. And then going in the vertical direction, we have the frequency. And then the color coding is the amplitude of it. Now, if you select too small of an area, uh, sample wrench won't draw anything. So that's something to bear in mind. And if it's too big, if it's, you know, like minutes or much longer than that, um, sample wrench will only give you the first section of it, maybe the first 10 seconds or something. Uh, usually there's not much need to go sort of beyond that. You want to just look at a, a piece of it. So in any case, um, we can see that there is some frequency content down here right, in this area below maybe 2,000 hertz or so. So how can we see this a little bit better, right? What, what can we do? Um, to bring out the amplitude, what we can do is change that um, sensitivity from linear to logarithmic. In other words, a decibel version. Now you can set this up. You'll notice there's a little uh, set of menus over here. So before I go any further, let me, let me just mention that you can save this image off right, as a bitmap, a JPEG, copy it to the clipboard, and so forth. Here in the View menu, you have an Options menu, uh, an options item. Um, you can also pick that up with a right mouse button click. And we get back that nice page that we had originally. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to a decibel amplitude scale, which is really going to pull up some of the lower amplitude items that we have. Okay, so now we can see what's going on a little bit better, right? So our high amplitudes are red. We can see that there are several of these. These would correspond effectively to the uh, different harmonics that we have. So what else can we do here? Well, there is a high res version of this, right? high resolution version. So we can see this is a little bit sharper. So here's our fundamental. Here's all of the individual um, overtones. You can see how they sort of fade out through the frequency spectrum, okay? Um, if you want to zoom in on this, you can also decide to use, instead of a linear frequency axis, you can use a logarithmic frequency axis, which is more how the human ear hears, right? And by ratios rather than strict value change. Okay, so here we are. We can see this one really well. That's 344 hertz, thereabouts. Um, here's your second harmonic. We've got some other stuff going on in here. Um, obviously, this is a bit more coarse compared to the preceding one, but notice what we have. You know, 344 hertz is way over here, whereas in the preceding one, 2 kilohertz was down here. So you're jumping this up in octaves, right? 43 to 86 to 172, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you can you can get a better idea of, of, um, uh, of what's going on in there, okay? So this typically would be referred to as a sonograph, right? Um, a voice print, if you will. It's, that's, this is the kind of graph you're getting. And just to show you um, how this frequency resolution, time resolution thing goes, I'm going to come in here 
um, and change this to a 2048 point, and you can see how this sharpens up really nice. All right, so you can see that uh, fundamental, the second harmonic, and so on. Um, everything else here is obviously this blue is way way down, so this is uh, you know, no no appreciable um, energy out here. All right. Okay, so this is all 2D. Now we do have some options. We can go into a sort of pseudo 3D form of this. So I'm gonna come in here and grab this mesh and shaded. And we're gonna we're gonna keep um, the uh, the log and the DB, okay? Um, and I'm gonna drop back from my high res here. And here we have a pseudo three-dimensional graph. Now you can rotate this, you have options. You can just grab the middle mouse button and sort of move this around. Okay. You can also, for a little bit more control, use the XYZ and TFA keys, right? So XYZ are the, you know, the axes. TFA is time, frequency, amplitude. That's probably the easiest one to remember. So if you want to uh, rotate this around the time axis, right? So here's our time axis. So if I want to rotate this around the time axis, hold down T, and then you can rotate this with the middle mouse button, right? And if you want to uh, rotate it around the frequency axis, hold down F, and you can do that. And obviously the last one, amplitude, if you want to rotate it around the amplitude axis, you can do, do it like so. Okay, all right. Now we're you know we're sort of getting somewhere, right? We can we can see something pretty cool looking. So you, and you can reverse this obviously, right? You can bring this back so that the the time now is zero going lengthwise this way, right? And your frequency is zero back here and going towards high frequencies, tw you know, sort of towards the screen. So you can flip this around, you know, whatever kind of works for you. All right, for you know as as you want to inspect this. Okay, all right, so sort of an interesting view. You can see the, the, uh, the strong harmonics there. All right, if I go to high res, right, we can see how this sharpens up pretty nice. Okay, um, this is a very short sample. So in high res with a 2048 point, it doesn't fill out the entire span because it, it has to do sort of whole chunks of this, but you can see the, the resolution that you're getting off of this, right, is, is increasing. Okay. Go to high res as well. You can kind of look down on this, right? You can see this is sort of what we were looking at before, uh, but now, you know, you have this more sort of, excuse me, 3D feel to it. You can see those harmonics as they're screaming across here in time. All right, so that's all high res. That's high, high frequency resolution and um, high resolution in terms of the, of the plot itself. Okay. All right. Now, um, I'm going to go back to my options. I'm going to go back into my uh, sort of normal resolution, get rid of high res here, and I'm going to go to linear on my frequency scale. And then I'm going to add, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do, do that in two steps. So here's, here's this guy, right? And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this project zones. Let me get back to 512 so we get a little bit more space. So what you can see now underneath is that 2D sort of a sonograph that we had before, and on top of it is this nice 3D thing that we have. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, to get a, a sort of an alternate view on things, because that's just one little half, half second note, right? Let us take a look at a different kind of wave. And you know that it was going to be this one. All right. So just to remind everybody, 
What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay, so now we've got voice. There's lots of different frequencies. Lots of different things are happening in time instead of just this one simple flute note. Okay, so call up our um, spectrum analysis again. Um, let's go back to the defaults so that we have something to... Um, you know, compare it against, right? So these, these are all the defaults that we initially started with. So normal amplitude scale, linear, 512 point, normal resolution, and this is going to just give us the 2D version of it. All right, so all we can really see here are just some little blips, and these, of course, correspond to the, the phrase, the words. All right. So let's do the same deal. We'll, we'll go to DB, we'll go to high res, we'll do those kinds of things, we'll see what happens. So let's go to DB. Hey, suddenly we can see the individual words and the frequencies. So when we see this kind of thing, right, where this is stretching out, we're getting higher frequencies. We're getting, for example, sibilant sounds, we're getting S's, S's kinds of those kinds of things. Um, when we just have information down here, these are, you know, maybe uh, nice vowel sounds, simple things, AE kind of sounds. Um, so you can get an idea of what's, of what's happening. And of course, the spaces in between the words, right, out here. Now, let's go in and grab the high res on this. See what we get from that. Okay, now we're starting to see some more detail in here. And this is probably a good time to take a look at um, that, that um, trade-off that I was mentioning between the, the time resolution and the uh, frequency resolution. So if I go down to maybe a 128 point, it's sort of smearing in this direction, but we're getting more detail in the time direction. On the other hand, if we go up to a 2048, we're getting much more detail on the frequency, right? Notice all these little ver these little horizontal lines that we're seeing, um, but it kind of smears out in the time domain. And you can compare that to the base version, right? So like I said, the 512 is a nice sort of middle of the road, good compromise. Okay, now, um, we might as well try and take a look at the, the 3D, A eh? Right. Okay, so let's um, let's go to we'll leave the five twelve mesh shaded, and see what we get. All right, so this is getting pretty complicated, right? I mean, there's a lot going on in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, sort of rotate this around. So remember. You can hold down the T key to rotate this around the time domain, the, the time axis. You can hold down the F key and rotate it around the frequency axis. Right? You can hold down the A key and rotate it around the amplitude axis, which is really what I want to do. Okay, so you can see here's those peaks, right? Here's the higher frequency content, like I was saying, those S kind of sounds, all right, that are, that are coming in on the individual words. Um, you can rotate this around, maybe get a little bit more of a 3D-ish kind of effect on it. But there's your phrase, right? There's our, um, our in the city of the future item. So there are other things you can do as well. You know, you can, you can actually change the, uh, the font on this to a script font. You can do uh, a solid version of this. All right, so it looks sort of that way. Uh, you can change the background. Um, you can do the, uh, again, you can do the project zones kind of thing. All right, so you can see it underneath. Um, useful stuff. Right, so if you're doing any kind of analysis on audio or similar kinds of things, you might use this at low frequencies for sign, uh, seismic work, something like that. You can get a pretty good idea of what's going on. All right, give it a shot. Have some fun.